how do we create the conditions so that the solutions actually become uh, real? So one issue that uh, has been raised in this is that we are moving from sort of globalization to, to deglobalization and or some form of uh, reglobalization. And uh, Jean-Marie Fogham, you are the WTO. You've been looking at these issues. You're right in the center of it. Can you give us a little bit your sense of what's actually been happening in this uh, phase? What are the facts we're telling us, and how do you see the process moving forward? Well, thank you, Masoud, and uh, good morning, everyone. I think your microphone is not yet on, but hopefully it will can be. You, can, can you hear me? Or? No? Okay. Ah, voila. Uh, I was saying thank you, Masoud, and good morning, everyone. I need to see what I do that. On, on, your, on your first question, um, what do we see? We, we don't really see deglobalization in the, in the figures, at least in the trade figures. I'm leaving aside investment or, or, or finance. Uh, of course, there are uh, trends which have been observed, like uh, an apparent slowdown of the rate of openness that is trade uh, uh, over GDP. But it can be explained by many statistical phenomena, such as the va va variations in, uh, in the commodity prices or uh, also the compositions of the GDP, which is more led by services, while trade is more led by goods. So there is not uh, really the feeling that there is a structural ebbing of globalization as far as trade is, uh, is concerned. There is also a slowing down of trade in the second half of the, uh, uh, the, the, the decade, uh, which probably has to do with some uh, maturity of the value chains uh, development. There is a sort of plateau. But here again, we don't see that moving back toward uh, a reduction of, uh, of the contribution of world trade to GDP. What is happening is, yes, that there are new forces which are going to shape this globalization and make it probably more complex and generate more uh, transaction costs for businesses and, uh, <clears throat> and also for government. And uh, there are three of those which are really clear. Uh, the first one is, of course, the, the return of uh, what we may call generically strategic trade policies, which has to do with industrial policy. And this is very, very documented now. We see a lot of uh, increasing of the intervention of the states to create comparative advantages. This has to do with the Cheap and Science Act in the US or the Inflation Reduction Act, the uh, projects of common European interest in Europe, of course, China 2025, and also in Japan there are some, some of these. So it's quite documented at the OECD. You see at least, for instance, the level of subsidies, government subsidies increasing. That's one. Uh, second one is what uh, I may call n quite naturally uh, decoupling policies, which involve a, a vast array of policies, from the worst, which is the war and sanctions, to the least, or oh, just the second one, the trade war, basically the one which has been unleashed by President Trump against China, or the softer concept of open strategic autonomy. You don't know exactly what is lying there. But there is this idea that uh, you will have a world shaped, uh, a world market will be shaped by a lot of politics. And if you take, for instance, sanctions, uh, uh, the, the sanctions, it was not really a systemic issue when it was dealing with small economies, if I may call like them like that. But when you are dealing with the elephant world economy like Russia, then you see that there is uh, the beginning of a global impact. Uh, <clears throat> and also recently in Brussels, there was a, a forum on export control. And uh, the figures were, were astonishing because, uh, for instance, for the UK, it's uh, minus 97% uh, uh, of export towards Russia and closely uh, the same for for the EU. So this decoupling is, a, a, is quite a new trend. We have been modeling that in the WTO, imagining a world, just like in the old days, uh, separated in two blocks, and that would mean, according to our economists, uh, a reduction of GDP, of overall GDP, in the long term of 5%. And the third trend, of course, is decarbonization. Uh, and we, we know that when it comes to uh, net zero strategies, different countries and players are adopting different strategies. For instance, the, uh, to put the price on carbon, the EU has been cho choosing a market, uh, exchange of uh, emission permit, others are choosing taxes, uh, others are, are moving toward uh, regulations like the US. So you do not have an equivalence of that, 
And it's even worse when you try to start measuring carbon. Just take uh, the steel sector, which is representing more or less 8% of the uh, global emissions. You already have more than 20 standards measurements uh, in the world. So these are trends which are going to make it more uh, complex. Are our institution for international cooperation capable of dealing with that? Well, we in the WTO, we have been bearing buried so, so many times that I think, uh, I think uh, even this morning I heard that uh, we, we, we were already dead, but I don't think so. Uh, we have a, a quite uh, a mixed situation. The first one is that there is a quite a reasonably strong capital about the core principle which are articulating the world trading system. These are transparency, good faith, <clears throat> and non-discrimination. And you do not see radical contestations or radical dispute over those principles, even in a worse situation like uh, the, uh, the one we, with the, ad the, the Trump administration, nobody has been walking out of the WTO. So you don't see really disagreement on the fact that we can cooperate on this basis. And in fact, we, all, uh, we, we even had some uh, successes uh, this year. I may come back to it. What we face and we are confronted with is uh, several trends which all the institutionals are dealing, institutions are dealing with. Um, the first one is obviously the divergences in values and, uh, and uh, government uh, systems, which translate into difficulties in the negotiation. The second one has to do with the, the how do we manage commons and the legacy for commons. This is very, the, the very big debate over climate change, but in the WTO we faced it also on the negotiation on fisheries. Uh, about the pro prohibition of uh, fisheries, which were of subsidies, which were contributing to overfishing, and then you have developing countries saying, "Guys, why should I uh, restrain my, the development of my fisheries? Why you have been taking all the fish historically?" So this is a really uh, um, complicated. Uh, these legacy issues are complicating the negotiation, and they are, they are very hard to cope. And of course, there is a difference in capacities uh, to, to tackle with uh, new trends of decarbonization and digitalization. So I think we will do some stop and go. We will have some successes in emergency circumstances. For instance, regarding the, the how to cope with the food crisis today, I think that if I look at the half empty glass, the response of global institution is quite reasonable, to a certain extent effective. I'm not saying that we are off the hook. It's a very difficult situation, but there is an, an answer. And in many cases, we will just face stalemates um, on, on, on core issues. So we'll have to deal with that, but do not throw the, um, the, the, the baby with the bus water. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for talking about the trends. Also raising this question, which I think we will come back to maybe even in the next panel, which is, are the institutions that were created, many of them going back 75, 80 years now, up to the job of dealing with the trends and issues that they are now being forced to deal with, and also do the main shareholders, members of these institutions, have confidence in them? Because what I find quite interesting to look at is that all the heads of institutions are busy defending themselves against their own shareholders uh, more and more, who are busy criticizing uh, what they are doing, and that's a, that's a difficult situation in which to find yourself. Um, now,